buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 124. Today I'm going to chat with John from Big Daddy Unlimited, talk about a Texas man who took down an active shooter, and discuss the new Ruger Light Rack and Ruger 57. I am your host, Ava Flannell, and John, how are you doing today? Fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. It hasn't snowed, so there's that. I haven't had to shovel any driveways lately, so I guess I can't complain. It could be down here in Florida. I think it's uh, 79 here today. So that, it, I'm so fun. jealous. Uh, everybody says that until they're here, and then they're like, "I wish I knew what winter felt like." I so I think like maybe around the holidays it would be nice to see snow, but other than that, I've gotten to the point where my goal in life is to maybe buy some sort of like winter house either in Vegas or Arizona. I don't know about Florida, just because it's it's kind of humid, yeah. um, which obviously during the winter it's not. But if I were to stay in the summer. So I just don't like the humidity, but that is my plan because I have concluded that I hate winter. I just, I hate <laughs> everything about it. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you, you just said, you just accept the fact that Christmas songs are mostly wrong. There's no such thing as a white <laughs> Christmas. You just kind of move on with it. So. Right. All right. Before we get into it, I'm going to talk about Manicore Arms. So I don't know if you're familiar with the Transformer rail. Uh, then he developed a rail that will take M-Lock, Picatinny, Key Mod, anything like that. So if you have any accessories, you don't have to change out your your rail just to adapt to the accessories. They come in 13 inch as well as 15 inch. Uh, their range in price, the most expensive is 165 but if you use the code GUNFUNNY15, you will get 15% off, and that is at manicorearms.com. And they're, they're pretty cool because we kind of, I think we all have boxes of, of old junk that we kind of wonder, like, hey, what are we doing with that key mod stuff anymore? Right, and I know. Like, you can kind of miss a match and, and get things back up and useful. I know. I know. There's nothing worse than buying something. And now you're like, cool, I really like this accessory, but now I have to buy another one to adapt to it because it's not going to accept key mod. And I know that key mod is definitely a little old, but there's still a lot of people that love it. It's true. I mean, I tell people, you know, jokingly, it's like, it's either M lock or it's wrong, <laughs> but, but you know, it's one of those things where, yeah, key mod and, and, you know, and other attachments like that, they still have their place. And I mean, you've spent money on the stuff. So absolutely kind of that, that it still works with. Yep, definitely. So definitely check out the transformer rail. All right, let's get into it. Learn the things you never knew on deconstructing the industry. So to start, can you just explain to listeners what Big Daddy Unlimited is and what your role there is? Sure. sure. So uh, I'm the president of Big Daddy Unlimited. And uh, Big Daddy Unlimited, you know, the easiest way I try to tell people what it is, is is it's an online version of like Costco for the firearms industry. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small monthly uh, membership fee. And, you know, as a member, you get fantastic pricing on pretty much everything that you see on all other uh, firearm websites, you know, retail stores uh, on the Internet. And how did this idea come about? Oh, I mean, we've had a we've had a physical location uh, in Gainesville, Florida, for close to seven years now. And uh, you know, I I went to school and stuff for internet marketing, which you know, being in the in the firearms industry, there's there's not a, a ton of demand for that. Just due to the fact you, know, you can't run things like Google ads or Facebook ads or or things like that. So it was one of those things where we just you know we were trying to figure out exactly you know how can we have a bigger presence uh, in, in the retail world, mostly uh, online. And, um, you know, and it was one of those things where there's, there's so many uh, phenomenal online retail stores out there already, already you know, that it, it's, it can be at times hard to compete. So it was, you know, one of those things where when we started really thinking about BDU, it was, you know, how can we set ourselves apart and be different? And, and it kind of just morphed into, you know, kind of going more along the lines of a, of a membership model and, you know, being able to uh, offer our members, you know, exclusive pricing on certain things uh, on, you know, on products and, and being able to just kind of be different than all the other online retail stores. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, I've seen, you know, tons of retail stores where it's like, I have my FFL and a lot of times what they're selling that product for, I can't even get at dealer cost. 
Right. So it's it's yeah. pretty insane. So I'm sure that it's it's kind of tough to even, I guess, compete with that. But you've found a way to kind of develop, you know, sort of a, a way to really save people a lot of money just by becoming a member. And then because I know that there's a lot of prices that you can't show, like there's certain, you know, like map prices and stuff like that. But you kind of found... I don't want to say like a, ra- a way around it, but you definitely found a way to give consumers the best price possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and uh, it, it's one of those things where, you know, your first month is 99 cents that you can just get in and check it out. If it's not for you, uh, you know, it's 99 cents. After that, it's 9.95 a month. Um, but, you know, being able to to have the, the amount of members that we have, you know, allows us to also pass the savings uh, of, you know, on back onto the customer. So it, it's worked out really well. You know, we started uh, April of last year and, um, you know, we have over 17,000 awesome members and and everything is, is going really, really well for us. Good. So I've noticed that a lot of companies that I work with, I know that they've jumped on board with you guys. What do you think it is that you guys offer that's causing so many companies? I mean, because I've noticed you've even you've gotten like Q and... Uh, just a lot of companies that typically are even hard to do business with because, or even buy their products because they can't keep them in stock, you know, quick enough. And I've noticed that you have a lot of these companies, uh, working with you that, you know, it's, so how do you, I mean, how do you think that you, uh, like, why do you think so many companies are jumping on board with you? Sure. Uh, you, you know, we are, I mean, we're different in, 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 in a good way, in a, in a sense of we have more of a, a relationship, uh, I would say with our members and, you know, and we do, we do surveys quite often. And, you know, what do our members want to see, you know, us carry more on our website? What companies do they want us to work with? And then it's certain things of just, you know, having, having good friends in the industry that we've been able to work with, you know, like, uh, Taryn Butler from Taryn Tactical, you know, been friends for a long time. And, um, and there's a lot of companies that want to, are willing to do business with us in different ways, you know, doing like exclusives, uh, like at the NRA show, when we released the, um, the John Wick trunk with Terran tactical, you know, that had all the, all the guns in it from John Wick three. Uh, and we made a custom case for it. You know, it's, it's just doing things differently. Uh, we did, a an exclusive, uh, vertex bag this year. Also with vertex, we did the, uh, gamut checkpoint in black multicam, you know, uh, a pattern that up to that point they had never done before. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we allow companies, you know, kind of, I, I, I think outside the box quite a bit, you know, I'm just a little bit different, you know, and it's one of those things where, uh, like I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up in the firearms retail store. You know, I didn't inherit the store from my dad or my grandfather. So there's a lot of things that we just, we do differently. And, you know, we love doing, you know, like I said, exclusives and collaborations with, with awesome companies. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and that's one of the things that I think kind of sets us apart. And, and one of the reasons why a lot of companies want to work with us. Yeah, definitely. So I have to ask if you, so you didn't really grow up within the industry. What got you into guns? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been, I mean, I've been hunting and stuff since I was uh, five, six years old. I think I was seven when my dad, you know, got me my first 12 gauge and then realized I needed a 20 gauge. (laughs) Right. I was Um, just thinking that I was like, Oh, that's, that's kind of (laughs) big. But but growing up, uh, you know, dove hunting and quail hunting and deer hunting with my dad, my grandfather, was uh, part of the USA Olympic uh, skeet team uh, in the 50s. You know, so I've always grown up around guns. I just never really grew up in the retail part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I grew up in in the middle of nowhere, Arizona, where, I, I mean, I can remember, I mean, I'm not that old. You know, I'm 35. I'm not that old. Uh, but, but I remember taking, uh, you know, my shotgun to school and taking it to the principal's office and leaving it there. Uh, and then after school, grabbing it and going dove hunting. And then, you know, my dad picking us up, you know, from, from where we were hunting, uh, and going home. So, you know, I've always, I've always been around firearms and, you know, the opportunity that I had at, at Big Daddy Guns, which is our retail store and Big Daddy Unlimited is really, you know, what, what got me more into, to the industry. Yeah, definitely. I didn't realize you were only 35. It really kind of makes me I question look older like than I am. It's been a hard couple of years. Well, it, it makes so. me question what the hell I'm doing with my life. <laughs> But, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be surrounded by fantastic people that work here. And, um, and, you know, and we, we have been able to, 
to grow an awesome place uh, to work that, you know, allows me to, to be kind of crazy uh, mm-hmm. at times. And, you know, uh, uh, some of you guys will see that at SHOT Show. I'm sure you'll, you'll see uh, the craziness that, that we're currently working on. And so I'm assuming that you are going to SHOT Show? I will be there live and in person and trying to hold a smile on my face. All <laughs> right. Uh, can you share with us like anything that you have planned for SHOT Show? So we have some exclusives coming out with, with some companies um, that are going to be in their booths. Some, some rifles with Radian that we're extremely happy about. I'll kind of leave it at that. And then I'll, I'll say that we have one project that is uh, six foot by four feet by three feet. Oh, and, boy. Uh, and and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Hmm, interesting. I'm definitely going to have to come by your booth and check it out. So, so yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of, um, you know, what we're trying to, to gear up for here in the last, you know, in the last two weeks, you know, and, and like we were talking, you know, before, uh, ever since we had our Epic shoot, you know, back in November, it's just kind of been nonstop between that to, you know, the holiday, you know, sales, retails part to Christmas, to New Year's to, mm-hmm. to now really focusing on, on shot show in a couple of weeks. I know. I hear you. I'm, I'm like, I don't even know what month it is anymore. <laughs> I, I feel like it's still December. <laughs> and I, then I, actually, even before shot show next week, and I have to go to the safari club show in Texas. Yeah. And that'll be interesting. So I'll probably talk about that and, you know, my experience in the next episode. But again, it's just cool. It's another show. I hope I don't get sick from traveling because that's all I need is to get sick right, right. before SHOT Show. Yeah, you, you, can't, you, you can't start SHOT Show less than 100%. Yeah, totally agree. Although the last couple of years I have not gotten sick, which is weird. Even, and I'm going to knock on wood, but... I have not gotten sick in over a year, which is insane because I used to be that kid that was always sick. Right. I don't know what changed, what I'm doing, but I need to keep it up. (laughs) It's it's all about emergency. That's it. it. Hand sanitizer. Yeah. Well, yeah, I constantly wash my hands. Even the minute I'm done working out, anything like that, if I'm grocery shopping, I text, I uh, touch the car. I'm just, I wash my hands or I keep like the antibacterial wipes in my car. So maybe that's it. So I'm not sure. I'm going to take a quick break and talk about SB Tactical, which I'm sure you're familiar with them. Absolutely. I love all the guys over there. Alex and the whole crew is an awesome group of people. They are definitely uh, awesome. I It just came to, like, I didn't even know that they came out with this, but they now have the SB A4 in OD green and gray. And this is fairly new, which is cool because, you know, if you have all of the other furniture on your gun and maybe it is OD green, I'm surprised actually that they don't have like a, a flat dark earth color. They got Unless, an FDE. They oh, they do? One. Okay, so. Yeah, that was in the original launch and they just launched the two new colors. Okay, the so then that makes sense because I'm like, hmm, that's usually like the most popular. So then that's nice because then if you, you know, if you already have the furniture, like the handguard and the grip and all that, and you add, you know, that brace. It'll match very nicely. So if you guys want to check them out, go to sb-tactical.com, use the code GUNFUNNY15, and that will get you 15% off. I will also be doing a booth appearance at SHOT Show. Their booth, if you guys are going to SHOT Show, is number 248, and uh, look out for details for that. So let's talk about the epic shoot. We got rained out, but overall, I thought it was a... Well, we, okay, I got rained out. <laughs> My hair, everything. No, we still, you still had the event. Um, and I thought it was still very successful considering the weather. And I mean, would you, would you consider, were you overall like happy with the event, how it went? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, this was the second year that, that we had put on the events. And uh, this year we had 75 awesome manufacturers, a, a ton of influencers, you know, like yourself, a lot of media um, there from magazines and websites, you know, pretty much everybody I could, I could, you know, really, really think they were there. And, you know, it's one of those events that, uh, I started kind of two years ago, I was at shot show and I was, I was just griping about media day Mm -hmm. and a buddy of mine in the industry was like, well, why don't you just do one yourself? And I was like, fine, then I will. And then I realized once I said that I actually had to do it. Right. Um, so what was your, Hold on. So what was your original, like, what were you griping about? Oh, uh, just, you know, the, the lines and, um, you know, the weather, it's always windy out in the desert. It is. Um, yeah. 
it, it's constant gunfire, you know, for just nonstop. So, you know, like, like you notice at our events, um, we had 15 minutes of, of quiet time every hour mm-hmm. uh, so that you could just take your ears off and talk to somebody. And then the other part of it was, you know, probably like, you know, it was it's the relationship building side. You know, we'll we'll all be at SHOT Show, but we really never have time to hang out. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. hey, Ava, we slap hands and we walk our separate ways, you know, and yeah. We fly thousands of miles. We're in this big building together for, you know, four or five days, yet we never, we never get to hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, epic shoot. I mean, we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner were all catered by us. You know, we went down to, to the clubhouse, uh, 17 South Rod and Gun Club in Savannah. If you live near the area, have to check it out. The place is, is gorgeous has every amenity you could ever think of. I was you know, we, honestly, I don't want to sound like an alcoholic, but I was super impressed with their bar. You know, they had a uh, really nice selection. It was definitely cozy. It kind of had like that log cabin feel to it. Yeah, I was yeah. really impressed with the facility. What what most people don't know is uh, we had we had the we had the event the year before at another range. Um, and I was like, you know, I, I needed to find something bigger. And I, I wanted a, a country club, that country club a- atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, me and my team, we went to like 10 or 12 different ranges and uh a buddy of mine was like, Hey, you should go try this range in Savannah. So I drove up there. It's like three and a half hours or so. And I met the owner, Kyle and business manager, Mike, uh, in the clubhouse. And I was like, I want to have my event here. And he was like, well, do you want to like look around the property and see the range? Uh, and I was like, no, because it had what I wanted. You're you know? like, you're like, I just went to the bathroom and there was chandeliers. So, you know, sold, exactly, you know, but yeah, that, that atmosphere, you know, that country club atmosphere, it allowed us to hang out. It allowed us to, to get out of the weather a little bit, mm-hmm. um, have some really good food, some good drinks, and just kind of put back in the the relationship part that sometimes gets sucked out of the industry just mm-hmm. because it's always work, yeah. you know? And, you know, so, I mean, it's just things like that. And then the the manufacturers that, that attended at the, were absolutely amazing and allowed us, you know, brought a lot of really cool guns and stuff for, for us to... Is that a uh, siren in the background? Yeah. Are you we're, in trouble? We're near, we're near, we're near a, an interstate. So I get it every now and then. Oh, nice. Um, as long as know, they're not uh, coming for you. I just wanted no, to make sure. Cause no, I was like, no. can we just finish the show first before they take you away? Yeah, you know, I'm all by name. I'll brace the door. <laughs> you know, so, so just being able to, to, to bring those elements, uh, back into, to, to a media day mm-hmm. was really what, what I was looking for. And, you know, and everybody seemed to have a, have a fantastic time. And, uh, you know, we already got it on the calendar for, for next November. Very nice. Yeah. I thought it was definitely enjoyable. I ended up spending a few extra days in Georgia because this is my first time I think that I've been in Georgia and, uh, and so I was got like, the best weather of Georgia then. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the, the weather wasn't great. Like even it didn't rain as much the following days, but it was definitely pretty cold. But I, I just, I mean, Savannah was beautiful. I yeah. loved all the history and the houses and I went on some like bar crawl ghost tour and it's funny because I took some pictures of, they're like, yeah, take pictures, you know, and, and they're like, sometimes ghosts will appear in your pictures. Well, I must have been drunk or moving or whatever, but you know, when you get like the, the little lines in the pictures. <laughs> Yeah. So the next morning, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think this is a ghost. And people are like, all right, how much coffee did you drink or were you drunk? <laughs> uh, so, but here I'm thinking, oh, I, I saw a ghost, but it was just, I thought Georgia was just like super beautiful. And then the food, cause you know, I live in Colorado and the food's like, yeah. eh, it's all right, but I used to live in New York City. So I definitely kind of miss really good food. So I just like ate my way through. That's all that mattered, you know, and it was really cool because. Uh, you know, with daylight savings time, it's, it was pretty much dark at five thirty, mm-hmm. uh, and I think we hung out until nine thirty, ten o'clock. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and it was just one of those things where that was what I was wanting to get out of it. You know, I mean, some guys, you know, were handing out cigars and you know, yeah, open Such. bar. Such gave know. me one of his cigars. Yeah. So, well, Such always, it's like he always has a pocket of cigars. Um, He's like, here, you want one? I'm like, I've never smoked a cigar, but I'm like, let's make a YouTube video of you teaching me how to smoke a cigar. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, really, really cool event. And, um, you know, and I look forward to, to seeing it grow even more next year. Are you going to have it at the same facility? Same facility next year. Is there anything that you would have changed or that you plan to change? Yeah. So, um, we, we are actually working, 
uh, with the range to to add some ev- even more amenities um, to the range. There's going to be three more bays actually by the time we get there next year, wow. uh, including a bay out to a thousand yards. So so yeah, there's going to be some awesome amenities. You know, I mean, I I, I feel like I feel like uh, you know the Iraq veteran shoot. You know, Eric and I are, are just freaking swamped by by rain the last couple of years. You know, I went to his event just three or four weeks before that, uh, and I literally got on the phone and I was like, "Order more tents, right. more tents," you know, uh, just in case. And of course, it did end up raining. But but you know, we're gonna have we're working on the the awnings on the on all the gun ranges being even longer than they were last year, and you know, and fantastic companies like Grizzly Targets really helped out with all the steel that we had out there. So we'll have even more next year of just different targets for for people to have fun with. And then uh, all the manufacturers that attended, are these the companies that you primarily deal with on your website that you sell? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a, a lot of them, you know, and some of them, uh, some of them, we, we don't even sell their products or didn't at the time. Um, they had just heard about the event, uh, you know, and people talking about it from the year previous. And, you know, and that was, that was part of the relationship building is uh, being able to, to put a name and a face together mm-hmm. instead of just, you know, over the phone all the time. And, you know, and for manufacturers to, to have influencers like yourself be able to, uh, get videos of, of their, their new products. Um, there were, you know, some companies there that were releasing new stuff for shot show that people already got videos of. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and I think all in all, you know, it was really beneficial for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And you had some really big name influencers there, like Colian Noir, uh, Mr. Guns and Gear. Such, I mean, you, yeah. you definitely have military arms channel, Iraq veteran, uh, yeah. a, a lot of fantastic people, you know, and 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 it's one of those things where, you know, they're they're a part of the of the BDU family also, you know, and they've helped us, you know, as as affiliates and stuff, and and it's fantastic to to just be able to hang out, you mm-hmm. know, like I, you can't hang out with Such and not have a great time. He's you know, super Don, nice. Don's, Don's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in the world. Uh, we laugh all the time, but yet, you know, it's funny. The, the industry that, that you and I live in, it's really not that big, yet we really never have time to hang out with one another. Absolutely. You know? I know. So, so it's just, it's one of those things where it's funny how you can quasi fit our whole industry, uh, into one gun range, yet we only see each other, you know, a, a couple minutes a year. Mm-hmm. I know. And other than that, like I'll talk to him on the phone and stuff, but it's not the same. But I always, I always have such a fun time at these events because you're with people that are pretty much like on your level that like the same things that you do, pretty much have the same exact sense of humor. So it's always just a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything within the firearms industry that you would like to see change or that you kind of can't stand? You know, I, I would love, I would love to see a lot of companies try to work more at the youth level. And I'm not just saying like youth products, mm-hmm. but, but, but more along the lines of, of working with companies, you know, Boy Scouts and, and things like that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Appleseed Foundation and, 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 you know, really helping the youth understand the responsibilities and, you know, and, and the fun and joy that comes with, with firearms. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I feel like it's one of those things where, you know, and not bashing anybody, but, you know, NRA and, and other organizations like that, they're trying to target us still, yeah. you know, uh, in, in, instead of nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, ma- male and females, you know, and that's something that, that we have, we have tried to help out a, as many people as possible. You know, we, we donated 10 MP 1522 rifles all the ammo magazines, everything that was needed to, to, to James Jaeger and tactical response, uh, just so he could host some classes for some Girl Scouts wow. that were not allowed to utilize some of the facilities that the Boy Scouts had. So he invited all the Girl Scouts to his range um, to do training uh, with 1522s. So that was really cool. You know, I love like all the work that like Top Shot Dustin, Dustin Ellerman does with, you know, with his camp in the summer and, you know, introducing, introducing a lot of kids um, to the firearms industry in a, a safe and controlled environment that they can go out and, uh, y- you know, and work on fine motor skills, work on 
camaraderie with others, but also, you know, like I said, gain the responsibility that, that a firearm needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's an excellent answer. And that's something that I completely agree with. I think that, you know, the NRA is still focused on, you know, if anything, the elderly or, you know, maybe our age group, but for the most part, even in the thirties, I don't think that they really focus too much on us because they assume we don't have as much income, you know, to, to donate. Right. So, but it, but people don't realize that as they say, you know, like the youth is the future. And at this point we have to get people into guns. Otherwise, before we know it, I mean, I feel like the second amendment is just going to be wiped out. Yeah. And, you know, and I think, you know, one of the, one of the, the biggest attacks that we have on the second amendment right now is, you know, you, you, you want to say there's a, a, uh, a leaning towards a more liberal, I would say demographic in like mm -hmm. the college age kids. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, and I think the only way to combat that is to, you know, not to, I mean, we live in a college town here. It's not to, to go onto the college campus at that time, you know, and try to have yelling matches about our, our gun free zones, you know, good or bad. It's, it's going after that kid before he ever, you know, even gets into high school. So that when people, you know, want to bring up, you know, I don't think guns are safe. You know, I don't think they can be handled. Like I've been, you know, he can, he can state like, I've been using these things since they were nine years old. You can't tell me that it's the scariest thing that you've ever held in your hand uh, because I've been using them since I was a little kid, you know? And, and I think that's the, I think that's the only way to really start to see a change and make a change within the second amendment community, you know, is, is, is to go, even past the the teenage and and college age kids and and really get them when they're when they're a lot younger. Yeah, I completely agree. What are your future goals for Big Daddy Unlimited? Oh man, future goals. You know, it's always it's always a moving target. You're we, like we, you're like, well, you know, 2 weeks from now release the 6 foot whatever object. <laughs> uh, no, you know, we we have a, we have a lot of stuff in the works, Ava. You know, we we're working on uh, we want to have our our own shooting facility to to help facilitate, you know, what we want to do, you know, on YouTube and on social media for, for our own company, mm -hmm. um, and to have a place that you know people like you could come down to and and utilize the resources that that are there as well, and you know, and really just to to continue to make a better experience for for all of our members. You know, a lot of people think that we're a larger company, you know, we're still, we're still really roughly only like a year and a half old on this end of things, mm -hmm. you know, and we have a lot of fantastic people and that's where I think a lot of the maturity and stuff comes from, but uh, there's still a lot that we can, we can always work on with, within our business. You know, it's not like we've been around for 75 years and we're just trying to fine tune things here and there. You know, we're constantly on a daily basis trying to figure out how can we be uh, a better, a better business, a better company. And um, you know, that's really what, what our, our future goals are, you know, at this time, and then to uh, work even closer with with more fantastic manufacturers in the industry. Excellent goals. So, if anyone is interested in signing up to join Big Daddy Unlimited, there is the the website is in the show notes. Otherwise, can you just tell people exactly where they can find you on the internet, social media, all of that good stuff? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You can, uh, of course. I mean, our, our website is BigDaddyUnlimited.com. You can go there and uh, become a member today for just 99 cents and, uh, you know, click around and, and see what we can offer uh, you as far as, you know, great pricing and great customer service. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, uh, all at Big Daddy Unlimited. Um, so, you know, go ahead and check us out there. We do a lot of, you know, Facebook only uh, specials and, and things like that. So make sure you, you definitely follow us there. Awesome. All right. You ready to continue the rest of the show with me? Rock and roll. All right, cool. All right, so Sportsman's Guide. So right now they are doing a winter clearance sale. Uh, so basically like all like anything cold weather related, clothes, uh, outdoor sports, you know, that take place in the winter. Uh, huge sale. I think it's like up to maybe 60% off. So definitely check them out. That's sportsmansguide.com. If you use the code GUNFUNNY20, you will get $20 off your purchase of $100 or more. And, uh, and yeah, definitely check them out. They have, I mean, anything and everything. All right, let's get into the AF segment. Stupid, funny, cool, interesting, awesome, as, never mind, AF. 
So this story at this point is probably a little old, but I'm sure by now everyone's kind of heard of it. And if you haven't, uh, definitely an interesting story. So uh, there was a Texas church shooting and uh, basically the shooter, he came in, he pulled a shotgun from under his coat and the first person that went to go draw his gun, um, he shot them and then he immediately shot the person right next to him. Well, this guy, Jack Wilson. So there was a, quite a few people that drew their guns, but yeah. Jack Wilson, who's a firearms instructor, I guess he was also the head of church uh, security. He drew his gun. It was a SIG 229-357, and he took down the active shooter. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of video clips about this. I mean, it's just, you know, like, I don't want to say, oh, this was great, you know, because still people were, were injured. Um, there could have been a lot more people, obviously, injured. But it's nice that, you know, finally, like, a good guy does, in fact, stop a bad guy with a gun. And which is pretty much what we've all been, you know, trying to preach and the the media, you know, likes to say otherwise. A few things that I've taken from this. So, I mean, I, so he was really quick to draw his gun. Obviously, he practiced. It's crazy that he used a, a three fifty seven SIG. You don't typically hear about that. No, and he, he if I remember right, uh, I mean, it's been a couple of weeks. He, he's like an FBI or was an FBI That's, agent or instructor so, or something like that. So it might have been one of the reasons he still carried uh-huh. uh, and, that caliber. Yeah, and uh, apparently he also owned a range that burnt down or a gun store. Yeah, I've heard you know, I've heard all kinds of stuff. I guarantee he's going to be like the new myth, you know, the, the myth, <laughs> the man, the legend. <laughs> you know, and I, I feel like it's one of those things where I, I think as a, as a as a gun community, we get too wrapped up in nine or 40, 45, three revolver, semi-auto, you know, I, I say the biggest takeaway, number one, it didn't matter what gun he had. He was efficient with it and he had mm-hmm. it on him, Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's what I think we need to, to really focus on, not what caliber was it was in or, or, you know, I can't believe he had a, a SIG or a, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what, what gun he had. He had a gun. And, you know, I mean, my, my points on this, um, I hate the fact that the places that we would, we would mentally think are the safest places for us to go, mm-hmm. uh, places of enjoyment, places of, of education or religion, you know, are, are supposed to quasi be a safe haven at times, you know, uh, a place that you can go and, and be yourself, relax, enjoy. And, and these are the places that are getting targeted. You know, you're not, you're not seeing, you're not seeing these shootings in, in, in places that aren't like that, you know, you're mm-hmm. seeing them in schools and in churches and movie theaters and things like that. And it's because it's a place where, where people at times can let their guard down. Mm-hmm. You know, they were, the, the, those, those people were going to have communion. They, they weren't going there for any other reason. And, and that's, I think what was, you know, I think that's what the, 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 the shooter was trying to, to take advantage of. And, you know, and, and it's funny because, I mean, Texas had just passed the law that you can carry a gun in church. Mm-hmm, uh, exactly. So right. unlike so. all these other states that tend to, you know, stricken the gun laws, Texas, after, you know, everything that happened over the summer, they changed quite a few laws where you can now carry in your car parked on on school property, right. uh, churches, you know, and and they lessened up a lot of these. And it, you know, obviously it paid off. Yeah. And, you know, and it's one of those things where. You know, I, it was a very sad story to, to hear, you know, in the holiday season mm-hmm. and everything like that. But I'm glad that there was somebody there, you know, there was somebody there to to, to protect everybody else. Definitely. Um, and and I, I hope that that is what the focus is, not not the not the shooter or the evil that he was trying to convey. Yeah, well, I mean, so since then, there's been a lot of people like Bloomberg, for example. Uh, he basically just said that citizens should not have a gun, only cops uh, should decide when to shoot. And then something that I also, I mean, everybody's kind of saying, you know, just so like so crazy. Some of the stuff that people are saying, but USA today, they said, Jack Wilson is exactly the type of person you want around with a gun because he's a firearms instructor, but we know nothing about the, at least six other parishioners who also appear to draw their handguns. And that's terrifying. Correct. So it's yeah, like they it, always have to take some spin in order to be like, yeah, well, that was good, but, you know, it could have ended really badly. Right, right. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's one of those things where, you know, the only thing I have to say is, is, is people, number one, people should, should not 
be able to tell me how, how I should live my life mm -hmm. uh, with regards to, to self-defense. Number two, you definitely shouldn't be able to tell me how to live my life if you have armed personnel around you. You know, and there's parts of me where it's like, I wouldn't carry a gun every day if I had five people surrounding me all day long that carried guns. It, okay. That's easy for me to say at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. You know, so it, it's one of those things that it, it's difficult for these people to ever think. I think at times that things can happen to them where people have accepted the responsibility that it might happen to them and they take the responsibility of, of doing something about that. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's hard to like, I'm, I'm glad that this happened and I'm glad that nobody else was hurt. But as you've said before, I mean, it ultimately is still a sad story. It's sad that we even have to be faced with this, but um, I, I agree. And, you know, and I think the sad, the, I think the saddest part of it is, is it's, it's, it's a trend that's going to continue. Mm -hmm. uh, evil, evil, not guns. Evil is never going to be wiped out of America or off the face of the earth. Yeah. And so since that can happen, this is, this is what is going to, to continue. And yeah. I hate, I hate that I have to say that, mm -hmm. you know, I have a four-year-old and I hate to have to think that that's a trend that's going to continue potentially, you know, when, when he's 35, when he's my age, mm -hmm. uh, but, but that's what it looks like. And, you know, and it's one of those things where I think it's hard, but accept that fact and then become a person that is a responsible, trained firearms carrier all the time. Absolutely. All right. On that note, let's talk about Sharps Bros. So aside from their amazing lower, lowers that they make, Rifle Dynamics is actually going to be teaching a build class. I believe it's in May, May 30th uh, through the 31st. They're going to be using the Sharps MB47 milled receiver in order to uh, put together an AK. It's, I mean, I've always wanted to go to Rifle Dynamics and take an AK class just because I don't know a ton about AKs and I think it would be awesome to build one myself. So if you guys are like me and you've been waiting for this opportunity, go to rifledynamics.com, check out the class. You can sign up. I think that there is still room available. Um, and that is, like I said, rifledynamics.com. Otherwise, check out all the other products that Sharps Bros has to offer at sharpsbros.com. Q&A. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Just kidding. Visit gunfunny.com forward slash contact to submit yours. All right. So today's question, toilet paper, should it unroll over the top or underneath? John, I'm going to let you go first. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to walk the line of both sides here. Oh boy. Uh, you're one of those. For, for, for me uh, as, as me, uh, the toilet paper goes over the top, no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, but if you live in a house with a four-year-old or a cat, they will then turn that into <laughs> like the finish line of a marathon and, and drag it throughout their house. So therefore, it goes behind the back end. I never even thought about that. That's hilarious. <laughs> you have a point because I am always, I mean, I've even, I've gone to people's houses and if it's not flipped, you know, the correct way, I'll Which change is. it. Which is, it should be going over the top. Correct. But it, I guess now after you said that, now I would feel bad if they have kids or cats and they're doing <laughs> it for exactly that reason. And I'm like, oh, bless their hearts. They don't know how to, you know, put the, the toilet paper on the right way and I change it. It could end in total disaster. You, you know, I, I think you still, as long as you feel better leaving the house, <laughs> I think you continue to, to go with it. It's uh, just, it's the OCD in me. It, but listen, it's, it's, it is not right for it to go underneath. It's it just, not. it doesn't make any sense. It starts, you, it, it doesn't rip usually like, no, it's over the top. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. So there's the answer to that. If you guys have any other questions, just go to gunfunny.com, click on the contact us form and just send your question and uh, I'll answer it on air. All right. Polymer 80. So right now they have their, they're new, and I saw this actually at the Epic Shoot, uh, their yep. new single stack, uh, frame guns. Super cool. It's called the PF9SS, as in single stack. And right now their frame kit is available for pre-order from their dealer network. So any of the dealers that sell, do you guys, do you actually sell Brownells? Does Big Daddy Unlimited sell? 
we do something, but we do, we are direct with Polymer 80, so we carry all of their stuff. Okay. Uh, so if they wanted to pre-order from you, could they? Uh, so it's something that we're working on. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're kind of waiting on some some finalized dates okay. you know, with regards to, to Polymer 80 on, on the SS as well. Okay. Um, so you know, good. So then, sure. so, you know, in the future, if you guys hear this down the road, hopefully you'll be set up with that and you guys get your Polymer 80 there. Otherwise, yeah, I, mean, I know that there's a lot of other... You know, we have every other polymer 80 product they have. We're just waiting on on the new one to come out. Nice, and it should be coming out soon. But like I said, it's available for pre order. And in order to find you know the dealer network, just go to polymer80.com. If you go to polymer80.com and you find something you like, use the code GunFunny, and that will get you fifteen percent off. Tactic talk, discussing popular guns and gear. Love it. Hate it? Find out now. So I don't know if you've seen the new guns that Ruger released this week, but they released the Ruger, what is it? The Ruger uh, Light Rack, which is basically an LCP chambered in 22. It's supposed to be really easy to manage, uh, hence the name Light Rack. I'm assuming that racking the slide is super easy. And, um, it's kind of crazy that like all these manufacturers are their, you know, their latest product of 2020 is basically the same gun, but it's chambered in 22. Yeah. Chris Vector just did that, which I'll talk about, you know, next show. But, but I, I actually, I'm kind of interested to see how it shoots. I think that the Ruger LCP initially when it came out, I had one. I thought it was just super snappy and I didn't really care for it. So I got rid of it, but. It really kind of was, you know, like the smallest gun that you could get that in the the Smith and Wesson bodyguard at the time. I mean, those two guns were just like super tiny. They made great concealed carry guns. But I kind of like the idea of like the LCP being chambered in 22. I don't know, yeah, especially for people I, that have smaller hands. I mean, I mean, I'll tell you, uh, I I was I was fiddling with both of these today. So, yeah, I when when Ruger came out with the LCP two. Uh, the the updated one. I thought it was a home run. Everything except for I didn't like the sights on it. Mm-hmm. I, I just wish they would have been like Smith and Wesson and just put sights that you could interchange if you wanted to put, you know, a, a trigicon or a fiber optic or a big dot, whatever your flavor was. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been hands down the best pocket pistol, we'll call it, out there. Yeah. Um, and but like you said, small guns like that, even in a 380, um, but like a defense load can be can be a very snappy little gun they weigh next to nothing you know and it can be quite a bit of recoil i i always said i wish they would have come out with a bodyguard in 22 magnum uh and then you know we heard this and uh you know i i love the fact that it's a uh it's it's a gun that listen it holds the same amount of rounds of 22 as like a full size M and P 22 or the Glock 44, you know, mm-hmm. and it's this little tiny gun that still holds, you know, 10 plus one. So the trigger on it is, is just like the trigger on the LCP two. If you've ever shot one of those out there, you guys, it's pretty much the same. The slide is beyond easy to rack. The safety is kind of interesting. Like if the safety's on, it doesn't lock the trigger. It goes to a completely like dead trigger. Like you can pull it all you want. Hmm. So, so that's kind of interesting. You know, but but we have them. We have them for sale uh, on on Big Daddy Unlimited, and they're moving really well. And then, you know, I mean, there's there's not much else you can say about it. It's, yeah, it's a Ruger. It's it's just like the LCP two, the Ruger five seven. This gun I want. It, I think hands I, down. I, I was I, like, because you know, like the the FN five seven is awesome, but you're looking at like roughly eleven hundred dollars, whereas this yeah. one I think MSRP is like eight hundred. It holds twenty rounds of you know five seven. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think it's a home run. Uh, you know, now I haven't, I haven't, whatever you want to call a durability test, I haven't, you know, shot it down range and uh, you know put it through its paces, mm-hmm. but. I like the five seven round. Um, I have a couple of SBRs and ARs chambered in five seven. It's a great. Uh, it, yes, it's an it's a more expensive round to shoot. It's a very effective round though. It shoots extremely flat, and you know, like a five seven in an AR platform is awesome for uh, a, a small, a smaller framed individual, uh, male or female, kid even, um, because there's pretty much 
hardly any recoil, but it's very reliable. And, um, and I think Ruger, you know, I think the five, seven could be one of those rounds that has a huge resurgence. If, if more people, you know, it's, it's just, it's just like the trend of 300 blackout. Uh, very few rifle companies made 300 blackout. You know, Hornady was really the, one of the only ones making ammunition for it. But the more manufacturers that came out with rifles chambered in 300 blackout, more ammo manufacturers started making ammo, which really brought the prices of, of 300 blackout down. You know, when it, when it was like a 300 whisper, it was, it wasn't uncommon to have a 300 blackout subsonic round be, you know, a buck, buck 50 around Mm -hmm. where, where now with so many ammo manufacturers loading it, prices come way down. And I hope the same happens with, with the five, seven round. Cause I think it's a fantastic round. Yeah, I agree. I always joked that, you know, if shit hit the fan, the P90 would actually be a fairly decent, like backpack gun. Absolutely. Just because, yeah. you know, the caliber is pretty, it, it's pretty legit. It holds 50 rounds and, and, you know, it's, it's very compact. So I will say though, that this Ruger 57, it definitely does look very similar to the FN 57, just the frame of it. Yes. But, um, I have not had an opportunity to get my hands on one, hopefully at shot show, if not sooner. But yeah, this is, this is one of the guns that I'm super excited about. Yeah. And I, and I hope that the price point, you know, I hope the price point gets people intrigued enough to, to give the five, seven round a chance to, to really take off and see if it's, it's a round that they like. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. We're going to get into iTunes reviews. If you guys haven't left an iTunes review, please do so. It just kind of helps to put the podcast on the map on iTunes and you have an opportunity to win cool prizes. So first review is from Justin Paulson, five stars, amazing podcast. I just started listening to your podcast. It is hands down one of the best podcasts out there. Thank you, Justin. Next is 22 Cheapster, five stars. I look towards Mondays now. I enjoy listening to Ava close to, oh, I've I've enjoyed listening to Ava close to two years now and watching her grow in the industry and in her podcasting skills. Each podcast is enjoyable, well edited. Thank you, Kenny Ortega. (laughs) Well knowledgeable guests from every part of the gun world, unbiased opinion. Just $1 to join the Patreon Facebook group is more than a deal. Plus you get to support a great podcast. All right. So out of those two, who would you pick a, as a winner to win a prize pack? Oh, Just, I get to pick this one. Yeah, the first or the second review. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna give it to 22 Cheapster just because he says he's been around for two years. I know I'm that's loyalty. I'm giving the longevity the win today. I mean, he was with me even when I sucked, and he says that you know I'm coming into my own and I'm growing. I really don't think I am, but you know I appreciate it. So yeah, we are definitely sending you out a prize pack. <laughs> All right, we are going to start wrapping up. So if you guys want to find me, just go to gunfunny.com. There's links to everything. Uh, we are now on, okay, I think I spoke too soon, but we are on some sort of, gosh, what is it? We're on two new things, uh, and I'm going to have Kenny post links. So hopefully by the time this show comes out, you guys will see. But I know a lot of you guys have been requesting for the podcast to be listed in other places. So we just added two new uh, places. And of course, you know, from the top of my mind, I can't even think about, I can't think of what that's called, but you will see it on the website. There's also links to uh, YouTube. So you can listen to the podcast on the Gun Funny YouTube page. Otherwise, if you want to check out some of my reviews, there's a link to the Ava Flanell YouTube page. And if you guys can't get enough or you enjoy the show, you want to support the show, consider becoming a Patreon. Just $1 gets you access to the Patreon only Facebook page, which is super entertaining. Really enjoy everybody in there. They always make me laugh. And, you know, and at times it has its educational moments. Otherwise, there's a bunch of different levels that you can join Patreon. Balone Deadline is also giving away a $300 gift certificate to any Patreon that I draw once a month. So you have an opportunity for that, even if you just pledge a dollar. And I also wanted to thank the editor, Kenny Ortega. Thank you so much. I also wanted to thank the $25 patrons who are Corbin Bonafide, Iraq Veteran, 8888, Ryan Morrison, Michael Alexio, Elliot and Mike Pappas, Joe Lyons, Charger Arms, and Justin Paulson. And King of the Patreon is still Jon Snow. He wants me to say that Operator Tickles does not flush the toilet. She scares the crap out of it. And Operator Tickles is my dog. (laughs) If you don't follow her on Instagram, you should tack underscore tickles. 
And John, once again, thank you so much for spending time with me talking about Big Daddy Unlimited. For listeners who, again, want to find you on social media or on the website, can you just tell them where they can find you? Yeah, you can become a member at BigDaddyUnlimited.com or check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube at Big Daddy Unlimited. Awesome. All right, we are out of here. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Want to send feedback? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact. <laughs>